Subliminal. From the Latin stem, sublime. Something subliminal exists below the threshold of consciousness and is created through high-intensity stimuli so as to go undetected by the conscious mind but affect the subconscious. Subliminal messaging has a sordid history and notable examples of its use appear often. In 1957, James Vickery of Subliminal Projection Company Incorporated announced special equipment that would place subliminal messages in the advertising industry. He cited as a success story the now infamous New Jersey theater that superimposed the messages, drink Coca-Cola, and, hungry, eat popcorn, on the movie screen during a showing of the movie Picnic. Vickery claimed up to a 58% increase in relevant sales following the presentations. Shortly after Vickery's announcement, the major networks announced that they would not accept subliminal advertising or employ the technique on their radio or television productions. In 1973, the FTC and the FCC received numerous complaints about the presence of the subliminal message, get it, in a national television commercial for Husker Du, a children's game. The Premium Corporation of America voluntarily removed the commercial from the air, claiming that the subliminal message was inserted in the commercial by a misguided employee. The 1979 article in Time magazine titled, Secret Voices, detailed another company that at the time, had developed and patented audio equipment that mixes subliminal messages in music and that approximately 50 department stores had installed this audio equipment to embed the message, I am honest, I will not steal, in the music broadcast throughout the store. Declassified government documents from 1980 that the Central Intelligence Agency had considered using subliminal communication to implant suggestions or commands and to influence the results of political elections. Some of these documents indicate that government use of subliminal techniques could be accomplished on a widespread basis without having to disclose their use because of national security reasons. In 1984, the California Assembly passed a bill requiring that people be notified if they are about to be subjected to subliminal communications in a public place. The author of the bill claimed that the undisclosed use of subliminal messages was an invasion of privacy. While the American Civil Liberties Union was opposed to the use of subliminal communication, it did not support the bill because, in its opinion, it would have created a private cause of action that would have chilled speech. The ACLU stated that any such litigation should be handled by the state attorney general as fraud against consumers. In some cases, these stimuli can be manufactured with sounds, like static noise. Most noise used in subliminal tracks falls into one of three colors of noise. White, pink, and brown. Brown noise sounds similar to a distant waterfall. Pink noise sounds similar to waves crashing on a beach. White noise is all noise frequencies at equal intensity and sounds like rain. All of these sounds have been shown to benefit someone's ability to concentrate, sleep, or reduce anxiety. When manufacturing these sounds for use in subliminal messaging, they help someone's mind be more receptive to suggestions if there's a sublayer of vocal tracks. The use of subliminal messaging has been used in a number of beneficial ways, but it has also been used to disrupt and convert a person's way of thinking in harmful ways. In this video, we look at one of the more recent ways this tactic is used for the purpose of the transgender community. A small but growing number of YouTube channels generate and post videos that have been dubbed MTF subliminals. Videos on these channels deploy brown, pink, or white noise sound layers and are laced with distorted voice tracks of repeating messages. In some cases, there are other sounds such as light melodic piano, running water, and low volume non language words. Creators of these videos claim the subliminal messaging will help someone unlock the power to transition genders, often with viewer comments making claims of gaining freedom from the gender binary just by repeatedly listening to the videos while sleeping. Other viewers have claimed more rapid results with HRT when coupled with the subliminal tracks. Here's a more obvious subliminal track creation.
There is difficulty in isolating just the voice track due to heavy audio post-processing, but we can take most of the non-voice elements and dull them to a point where we can hear what's being said. Other examples are subtle, the voice is layered under several layers of noise or music to such a degree even partial scrubbing has a low-quality isolation result. However, the brain is able to isolate things on its own, and being lulled into a relaxed state to receive what messages are recorded is known to be an effective way to alter thoughts and beliefs. It is, in some contexts, easily argued that this manner of suggestion can be considered conversion therapy. The example of subliminal messaging involves the use of a female voice to make the message both soothing and reinforce certain beliefs related to sex and gender stereotypes. The intention is to implant an idea in the listener's mind that they did not originally hold. Subliminal messaging's complete extent of use and impact remains uncertain, but it has been employed to manipulate behavior and beliefs and although there is an overlap in self-affirmation, subliminal messaging and self-affirmation are two distinct concepts with different mechanisms and purposes. Subliminal messaging aims to influence the subconscious mind through subtle stimuli, while self-affirmation involves consciously reinforcing positive beliefs and attributes about oneself. Simply put, the former is the seed of someone else, and the latter is an individual watering their own seed. Even if someone consciously decides to use subliminal messaging on themselves, it does not become self-affirmation. Using subliminal messaging or any other technique to coerce or manipulate someone's identity, regardless of intent, goes against ethical guidelines and principles that prioritize the well-being and autonomy of individuals. After all, this is the core reasoning behind discrediting practices such as conversion therapy. As such, a strong possibility for why someone would subject themselves to subliminal messaging is an already established sense of self-awareness and integrity of identity, their already there, authentic self. Some people may be more prone to self-deception as a defense mechanism or to protect their self-image and appease a peer group, while others may have a higher propensity for honesty and self-awareness. Having a strong internal sense of authenticity and self-awareness can also contribute to the brain's resistance to self-deception. When someone has a clear understanding of values, beliefs, and identity, the brain may naturally reject attempts to deceive itself and strive for honesty and alignment with its concept of the true self, or as Albert Camus may have argued, external manipulation cannot lead to understanding authentic being. If someone has subjected themselves to subliminal messaging and formed beliefs about their sex or gender identity based on that manipulation, even if they perceive it as self-affirming, it should not be recognized as valid or true because the ethical implications and potential harm that may arise from self-induced manipulation can exacerbate other mental health conditions as well as trigger harmful behaviors. Capitulating or reinforcing beliefs that are based on self-induced manipulation and do not align with objective reality is actively participating in helping that individual victimize themselves.